This is episode 96 of Teacher Approved. You're listening to Teacher Approved, the podcast helping educators elevate what matters and simplify the rest. I'm Heidi. And I'm Emily. We're the creators behind Second Story Window, where we give research-based and teacher-approved strategies that make teaching less stressful and more effective. You can check out the show notes and resources from each episode at secondstorywindow.net. We're so glad you're tuning in today. Let's get to the show. Hey there, thanks for joining us today. In today's episode, we're planning a second grade class Halloween party and sharing a teacher approved tip for making any party run smoother. So we are quickly approaching our 100th episode. <laughs> that is so wild. I guess we are legit podcasters now. Heck yeah, we are. <laughs> to celebrate our 100th episode, we would love to have 100 five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts. Hey, we're shooting for the stars, guys. <laughs> so if you think we deserve five stars, would you mind taking a few seconds and leaving us a rating? And if you really enjoy this podcast, would you mind leaving us a review? We'd love to get to 50 reviews before our 100th episode. PJ just left this review. I absolutely love everything from Heidi and Emily. Their resources are fabulous and their podcast is full of great information. And BTeach10 said, I love to learn new tips and tricks. This podcast always gives me new ideas to try in my classroom. Thank you so much, you two. We really appreciate your kind words and we are so glad you like the podcast. So as a thank you, PJ and BTeach10, Will you please send us an email at hello at secondstorywindow.net so that we can give you a little treat? So Emily here, perhaps foolishly or maybe wisely, <laughs> has volunteered to be in charge of her second graders class Halloween party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I try to volunteer for one class party for each of my elementary age kids every year. So usually that means I'm doing a Halloween party for one and a Valentine party for the other. I've never had more than two in elementary school at the same time. But usually I only sign up as a helper. But <laughs> this year when I got to the sign up very quickly, I have to say, I got to that sign up very soon after it was posted. <laughs> but all that was left was party organizer. So I just went with it. And I wouldn't have signed up for it intentionally, but I have realized it will mean I get a bigger say in how the party goes. So that might actually be nice. <laughs> In the past, I've sometimes been biting my tongue a little about a room parent who has gone rogue in their planning or a party that is just not running efficiently at all, which if you know us, that is like my pet peeve of all time. So sometimes it's hard to just know too much, you know, so, <laughs> but I usually still try to just like go along for the ride and be in the background. But nope, this year I get to steer the ship a little bit. <laughs> well, I think you'll do an amazing job, but it is a tough spot to be in. So last year in our episodes 33 and 34 of our podcast, we did a deep dive into the wonderful, stressful world of class parties. So go back and check those out if you want all of our tips and tricks. And since we know a lot of you will be having class parties come up in the next few weeks, we wanted to use today's episode to plan a second grade Halloween party in real time. So hopefully this will get your wheels turning for your own class parties that may be coming up. And hopefully this gets you started on the right foot, Emily. Yeah, we're doing a little <laughs> double duty on my to-do list today. <laughs> <laughs> we need more episodes like this. Can we do one on laundry, maybe? <laughs> you guys let us know. You want an episode about laundry? <laughs> so the key to a successful class party is having a clear focus of what you want to happen. And to figure this out, we have seven steps to consider. Step one is get clear on your vision. So you're going to ask yourself, what do you want to happen? Step two is to get clear on your time frame. You need to know when it's happening. Step three is to get clear on your activities. So what is happening? Step four is to get clear on parent roles. Who is making this happen? Me. Me. <laughs> Hopefully you're not the problem. <laughs> Step five is get clear on supplies. What do you need to make this happen? Step six is to get clear on your game plan. How are we making this happen? And step seven is get it all cleared up. And how do we recover from what just happened? <laughs> so we're going to walk through these one at a time. And at the end, Emily will have a comprehensive plan for what she needs to do to pull together a well-organized, 
but fun, enjoyable, lively class party. For second grade, specifically. (laughs) So, Emily, step one is to get clear on your vision. Do you know what you want to have happen at this party? Yes, I think I know. For sure, we are going to do rotating stations. I just think that is pretty standard for class parties at this school that I'm at. But especially since there are always several parents who want to help, so it's easiest to do that with rotating stations. And in my experience, both as a teacher and a parent, stations is by far the easiest way to have a class oh, party. Oh, no joke. That is so true. And planning is so much easier when you do stations too. So there's going to be four parent helpers plus me. So I'm thinking four rotations or maybe five. I'm usually in favor of more rotations, but keep them short. The longer the rotation, the more time for some activities get done too quickly. And then there's time for behavior management issues to arise. Mm -hmm. Again, when you think like a teacher, you can't turn that off. The trick with shorter rotations, though, is having really good transitions or it's hard to fit that many rotations into the usually like one hour that's scheduled for these parties. And since I'm the helper and not the teacher in this situation, I'm not sure how much control I will have over how the transitions run. So I'm kind of leaning towards four rotations. If I were planning this party as a teacher, I'd for sure do five rotations and do them shorter. But maybe let's plan five just in case I want to run one too. It's good to have them planned out even if I if we don't do them all. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Okay, so you've got a good handle on how you want this party to go. So step two is to get clear on your time frame and when is this happening? And I know the answer to this and it's just bananas to me, but maybe this is standard and I'm just out of the loop. I'm sure in some places they do it this way too, but my kid's school does the Halloween parade first thing in the morning. They do it outside. It's usually freezing. The parents are like piled up in blankets on their lawn chairs. It is, <laughs> it's a pitiful sight. And then the parties are usually for like an hour after that. But it's so strange to me to do this first thing in the morning. (laughs) I just like can't wrap my head around it. The school I taught at always had the party and parade at the end of the day. But nobody consulted me, obviously. So I'm going to have to go with what's happening here. So I'll have about an hour from when they come in from the parade until recess. Maybe a little more if the parade's a little faster. I can see having it in the morning in the sense that like it's probably easier for parents who need to get to work. Yes. The parents get the kids right into the costumes in the morning. I see that too. Yes, that would be helpful. But then I just think from the teacher standpoint, that day is shocked. I can't wrap my head around it, like what they do for the rest of the day. Now, sometimes it's been early out, but not always. So we'll see. I can't remember if it's early out this year or not. For their sake, I hope it is. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you recover from that. Because we would do it in the afternoon like your school did. And so like, it was really hard to kind of have a normal day, but I could still fit in some like, Halloween math, or we would have a pretty normal morning. The morning would be pretty good. It'd be from lunch on. That was a little. It wasn't a nightmare to try and manage and get things done in the day. Right. I think if I had the party in the morning, I would just like throw up my hands and be like, yo, hope you like Charlie Brown's Halloween (laughs) movie because that's what we're watching. And then the parade and the party are done by morning recess. The first recess of the day, they're done with all the festivities. Like, Maybe the kids are tuckered out after that, but I'm going to guess not. Probably not. (laughs) And then tired, tired hyper kids are even worse. Anyway, nobody asked us. That's the lesson we've learned. (laughs) Okay, Emily, step three. So get clear on your activities. So what is happening? All right. So I'm going to plan five stations just in case. So the first one obviously is bingo. That is just the like every party you're doing bingo and that I'm going to do that. I'll put together a printable Halloween bingo game for this station and provide Smarties for making the boards. I like Smarties for this because they're not sticky and they come with a bunch of them already prepackaged. Perfect. So they're (laughs) easy to pass out and they're cheap and they're allergen free. So win, win, win. That is a nice one. Will you have like another prize for kids that get bingo or are you just like downplaying the competition at all costs? I have run this bingo station myself at many a class party and I have <laughs> never had prizes. Perfect. Because I just think it's then whoever doesn't get them is disappointed. Yep. And so I try and just make it for the fun of the game. We try and go for blackout, you know, yada, yada. Yeah. At worst case scenario, you could have a bigger treat or some dinky little prize that everybody gets at the end of the rotation, but I personally would not want to deal with prizes. Yeah. Don't, don't add to the complication of this if yeah. you don't have to. <laughs> okay. Station two that's going to be a craft. If I were running this station, I would order cheap craft kits from Oriental Trading because that's how I roll. I'd rather pay some money and not have to do any prepping. (laughs) 
Yeah. But for a really easy one, you can't go wrong with like tissue paper ghosts. You just get a sucker, like a Tootsie Pop for each kid. Yes, perfect. They cover it with a tissue or maybe a couple of tissues to give it some layers. <laughs> and then you secure that with like a rubber band or a twisty tie. And then they can draw on a ghost face or maybe add some other accessories like a bow ties or your <laughs> bows, you know, the simplest, this would be literally the simplest craft if you needed like the absolute easiest thing to do. But also, if you have a 15 minute station, this is not going to fill yeah. the whole time. So I saw when <laughs> yesterday they took a picture of because I thought, oh, this could work for Emily, where you give them like a construction paper and they draw like a big ghost outline on it. Mm-hmm. And then it's like a white crayon. And then they fill it in, they glue cotton balls in to fill it in. And that I think would be second grade heaven of just like gluing these cotton balls in this well, ghost I know shape. Eloise would yes. be all over that. <laughs> and then you just cut, they just cut out a like a little simple face from black construction paper and glue that on and it's done so i thought that was an easy one that is a cute idea i'll have to think about that okay so we got two stations down do you have ideas for the rest well i'm thinking something more active for station three so i think i would tend to do something like our house something from our halloween brain breaks oh that's fun or like a minute to win it sort of game just and there's so many of those i'm not even gonna like specifically pick one here because there's so many to pick from and also my parent helpers are probably going to want some say in yes. the things they do here. So I'm trying not to be like too rigid about what I plan. But something more active is what I'm thinking. Smart. Station four, I'm thinking cookie decorating. Yes, the standard. I don't feel like there's ever a class party I've held at that didn't have cookie decorating. Personally, I hate it. It's not a station <laughs> I would ever volunteer no. to man because it's the licking of the knives. I cannot I take it. Yeah. <laughs> Because if you do it, you have to have each kid needs their own disposable knife yep. and a baggie to take their uneaten cookie home. Yep. It's just, I can't handle it. So I would be very open to the idea of a different snack activity here too. If parents had another idea, but I think I would suggest cookie decorating unless they have a different idea. I know our friend Cassidy always did like dipping nutter butters and they put chocolate chip eyes on. Oh, I did that with my kids at home last year. That's a good idea. Yeah. As long as no one's allergic to peanuts. Yeah. And now I'm trying to remember this. Her class might be one that does have oh, a peanut dang. allergy. I don't think Neil's does. But I, I guess she could does. go fancy and do Milano's. <laughs> <laughs> the right shape. That's too expensive. They won't appreciate <laughs> <No>. it. <laughs> okay. Any ideas on a fifth station since you were just kind of working on that? I'm torn on this one because personally, I love to have a story station where it's just having a more calm one, especially if you do this one like after the minute to win it games (laughs) and just do reading Halloween books. And I have a whole stack of Halloween books. And if this is the station that I have to man, this is 100% what I'm doing (laughs) (laughs) because I love reading and I have a really awesome and not at all out of control selection of Halloween books to pick from. (laughs) So I'm thinking that's what I would do for station five. If I end up manning a station, I think that's the one I will do. Another simple idea is like building toothpick structures with those candy pumpkins that are kind of like giant candy corns. The only thing is like what you do with that after. Yeah. I do love a STEM activity. If we can figure out one that doesn't just mean like a whole bunch of random things going home in the backpack of like, what do you do with this? (laughs) Hey there, teacher friend. Do you have a question or concern that could use a teacher-proof solution? We'd love to help you out by answering your question here on the podcast. You can submit your questions to hello at secondstorywindow.net and put podcast question in your subject line. Can't wait to hear what's on your mind. Okay, step four, parent roles. Who's making this happen? And this is tricky because... We're a little bit early, recording this a little bit early. Right. And I'm not the teacher in this scenario. (laughs) I'm the parent. So I know that I am in charge of it, but I don't know much more beyond that. And I know who signed up and there's only, there were only spots for four parents to help plus me. So my ideal situation with a class party like this, if I were the one running it would be that I would be the photographer. So then I can wander around. I can make sure we're getting all the pictures for the teacher to send to the parents or whatever. And I can also be troubleshooting behavior issues, <laughs> which you yep. would think the teacher would do. I don't know about this teacher specifically. So like, believe me, this is not shade at her because so far I think she's great. But I have been a helper at class parties where the teacher's at her desk working the whole time and not doing <laughs> crowd control, which like blows my mind. Oh, wow. I'm more than willing and, <laughs> and able to do crowd control as long as I don't have to be manning a station. So I would like to be doing that and taking pictures. I'm just not sure if we'll be able to in this scenario, but yeah, that's tricky. That's 
And another thing to keep in mind with, you know, is the size of the class. Right. Because you don't want, you know, like six or seven kids at one station. Right. And I haven't been given an exact number yet, but I would be surprised if it's less than 24, which means six at a station if we only do four. So I feel like we're probably going to have to do the five stations. And But I do like that idea that we shared last year. Somebody had suggested it and we shared it on the podcast to have somebody have their role be the photographer. So I do really like that idea. Not sure I'm going to be able to do it in this party with the amount of people I have to help. But I think I'm I'm planning to send out an email once I get the green light from the teacher. I will just link everybody to a Google Doc to like put in the details of what they want to do and that kind of a thing. That's a smart way to get everyone organized and on the same page. Yeah. And then I can put in my suggestions and link to anything I want to link to. Like if you need an idea, here's this one. If you want to do something else, feel free. And I am trying to stay open to the possibility that some of these parents might come in with a really strong idea of what they want to do. And it might not be any of these stations I've suggested. And I don't want to cause any drama. So I am, this is a loose plan for stations for people who don't want to think. But if somebody has a strong opinion, we will, of course, adapt. And as a teacher, assigning yourself to be the class photographer is another way to kind of like stay engaged without feeling like you're micromanaging the parents. Right. Because parents are watching you. Mm -hmm. Even if they're, you know, there to run the party, they're watching the teacher. So you definitely want to at least look like you're involved with what's happening. Yeah. (laughs) And being a photographer is a great way to do that. Yeah, for sure. And I do think if you are the teacher and you want a party that doesn't get out of control, I think giving specific guidelines to the parents ahead of time of what sort of activities you're okay with and not okay with would be helpful. Also, I think as the teacher, you would be well within your prerogative to assign out the stations of like, these are the specific stations I want and let people sign up for those if you want to keep it a little bit more under control, which as a teacher, I that's so nice. I yeah. would for sure want things to be that way. But again, I'm in the parent role in this situation. So it's a little bit of a, a role reversal that I'm yes. getting used to. So anyways, let's move on. Okay. So step five is to get clear on supplies. What do you need to make this happen? So having your Google Docs is a great way to get yes. that all sorted out. And I think just linking to all of my ideas for them and having an idea in place of what activities they could do if they need ideas, but every parent will provide their own materials. I'll really only need to do my own. And if I end up doing stories, I don't really particularly have to do anything for that. If somebody does want to do the bingo one, I'm pretty sure I have one already prepped and saved from doing it myself in the past. So <laughs> I'll probably offer that one up if they want it. That's a smart way to do it. As a teacher, if I was having parents come in, I would usually try and get stuff myself because I didn't, oh, this sounds terrible, but I didn't trust that they would have, that they would get everything they needed Yeah, early enough. You know, as the teacher, I know like, okay, if we're going to do this pumpkin toothpick building thing, I got to buy these pumpkins early. Because if we're someone's trying to buy them October 30th, they might not be able to find a class set somewhere. Right. So if it was seasonal, I would kind of like stock up on it ahead of time. Craft kit, same thing. Like it is too much stress for me to have to like pull this together last second because a parent just doesn't have the background yeah, to know that they need through, to hustle. Yeah. And I also think it is a good idea for the teacher to have like, make sure you've got plastic knives if you're going to be doing yep. the cake deco- <laughs> or the cookie decorating and things like that. Just have them on hand in case the parent doesn't think yep. of it. <laughs> yep. Of the napkins and the paper plates. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's so gross. <laughs> it's the worst. They, you just see, like, they can't help with that knife and, and the then frosting. They in almost mouth. never want to immediately eat the cookies. So then the cookie has to live somewhere for the rest of the yep. day. And then they carry it home and also don't eat it. And it's a nightmare, basically. But I do think that that's just a standard activity. And I'm guessing that's what <laughs> will happen at this party. Yeah, but so, not by me. No. I am not doing that station. <laughs> so plastic bags, disposable knives, yep. washed hands. We'll live through it. <laughs> okay, step six, get clear on your game plan. So how are we making this happen? Who's getting supplies? Who's setting it up? It sounds like you've got a pretty I know. Good I think we kind this. of covered this in the previous steps. I think we have a game plan. Hey, that's good. It doesn't sound like we have experience doing this at all. <laughs> PTSD from <laughs> yes. doing this at all. Oh, one thing we didn't talk about, though, is like getting it set up. How do you handle that when the parade is right before it and it's right when school starts? So... What we have done in the past that's actually worked pretty well with this is that you go out to watch just the kid you need to watch in the parade, (laughs) which is a trouble. It was tricky the year that I had kids in two totally different grades over there that I needed to go help with one of their parties. So making sure I saw both of them. But I found 
the younger ones came out first. So I saw that one first. And then I just went and walked towards the end of the line. Oh, smart. <laughs> until I found the older ones. And then I could go head in. If you're doing a party, they let you go in. And so as soon as oh, that's good. As soon as I'd seen my kid, I'd go in and go set up for the party then. Oh, that's good. That makes yeah. a difference. Yes, it does. Okay. So step seven is getting it all cleared up. How do we recover from what just happened? And the good thing, I guess, with having this in the morning is it goes right up until recess. And so we have a quick like amount of time right then that we can quickly clean up. I find that the parents who come in to volunteer are usually pretty quick at cleaning up their stations anyway, if we if you did have to do it on a tight time frame. But it's nice to have a little bit of time and help that teacher get the room back to normal as much as she can before they come back in from recess. That is helpful. And, you know, bringing a couple extra garbage bags or if you're the teacher, having some extra garbage bags there can make it yeah. so much quicker just to get it all packed up and out the door so you can get on with your day. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, I don't know, Emily, are you feeling like you have a good handle on it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we'll see how it all shakes out because the parents coming in with their other ideas is the variable in all of this. (laughs) Someone shows up with a pinata and there's Mm -hmm. nowhere to hang it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen some pretty (laughs) wild things come in where I'm like, what were you thinking? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's the the problem because. They just get so excited (laughs) and they don't think through. see this fun idea online and you just don't know how to interpret that for 24 yes. seven year olds that's why i'm hoping giving them some suggested categories will narrow that down and also yeah. reminding them of like the time frame of like yes. we only have 10 minutes so it needs to be something that could be fully wrapped up in 10 minutes very smart yeah so hopefully if you have a halloween party coming up soon this gave you some good ideas to get started with your own planning as adults we tend to think that for it to feel like a party, it has to be big in order to feel fun. Mm-hmm. But that really isn't true. It's totally not true. Kids are so happy with the simplest of things, truly. The things that entertain kids are the simplest. Yeah, anything out of the ordinary really feels like a special activity. So yep. just shaking it up a little bit is already going to make it feel like a party. So don't feel like you need a pinata unless that's really important to you. <laughs> for sure. Well, we would love to hear your thoughts on class parties. We know we've got some amazing tips and tricks from our listeners out there. So please come join the conversation in our teacher approved Facebook group, or you can connect with us on Instagram at second story window. And that's with a two. Now let's talk about this week's teacher approved tip. Each week we leave you with a small actionable tip that you can apply in your classroom today. This week's teacher approved tip is plan a time filler activity when you have class parties. So one of the things that make class parties tricky to manage is that they often come with a lot of waiting around time for the kids. You know, the kids might end up waiting while the party is being set up. They might end up waiting to take their turn in a game if there's, you know, a large group. They might finish their station early and end up waiting to rotate. They might need to wait while the party is cleaned up and then the room is set back in order. And because of all of the novelty of everything going on and to set up this party, you can bet that waiting time is going to turn into getting out of control time. And one of the keys of classroom management is keeping a balance between novelty and structure. So when the novelty is high, like on a class party day, (laughs) we have to counteract it by increasing structure. And that is why I love to use a work packet as my time filler on party days. And I hate saying that out loud because it sounds so boring. (laughs) It does. But if you use some themed worksheets and maybe throw in a holiday word search, genuinely, honestly, the kids think it's a treat. It's totally true. Plus, I think kids really appreciate being reined in a little. They want some boundaries. Most kids don't like feeling out of control. So even if they can't express it, they actually welcome an activity that can regulate their excitement a bit. And so that's another reason I think why work packets are a win It gives kids something low-key to do with all of that excited energy. And Emily, I know it's different with your kid's school, but like when we were teaching, our parties were always in the afternoon. So I tried to keep my morning super routine, relying on our regular structure like that helped tame some of the crazy. I was always surprised on Halloween mornings how chill they were doing their morning work. Mm -hmm. And my kids came in costumes, so it'd be like looking at like, oh, there's a unicorn and there's a dinosaur and there's an astronaut (laughs) all doing their morning work silently. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened, but it worked. And then instead of starting our first lesson, I would introduce the work packet. I purposefully included more activities than the kids could do at one sitting when I was organizing this packet. And if you really want to maximize your copies, 
You can shrink your originals down to 50%. Then you can copy two worksheets on each side of the page. So then you get four activities on each sheet of paper. Which is quite a bargain. So with four pages, you could have 16 worksheets. That's enough to keep kids busy for a long time. Yep. And when it came time to set up the class party, my students had already had a little work time with their packets so they could easily get back into it while everything got arranged. I had already gone through it page by page with them and answered other questions so they could just get started. Well, the parents and I set everything up. They had something to keep them busy. And then I would have them keep those packets on their desks during the party. And if they were at a station that they finished early, they just went back to their desks and worked for a few minutes so they weren't goofing off, messing with stuff, causing problems. Yeah, this is heading off problems in advance by having this fast finisher ready to go. Which is our favorite management tip. Yep. (laughs) And by the time the party was over, though... Like they could go back to the work packets, but I would usually put on a video at that point. So the kids that were still really invested in those packets would continue to work on them. But, you know, by that point, we're all tired. Let's let's just chill out with little Garfield Halloween. (laughs) So if you plan ahead, you can really get a whole day's use out of a single work packet. And that is definitely a win on a day with so much craziness. To wrap up the show, we are sharing what we're giving extra credit to this week. Emily, what gets your extra credit? So I'm giving extra credit to the Zevo Flying Insect (laughs) Trip. Okay. So it is like a plug-in device that's just like kind of a white, almost like, I don't even know how to describe it, kind of like rounded cylinder sort of half. And on the back, it's sticky. And then in there, there's a little like blue light. So it's facing between the device and your wall. So it's not blaring at you it's coming out the sides uh, okay and then the insects get attracted to it fly around the side of it and get stuck on the inside and then that little like sticky thing you can pull out from the top and just switch out oh nice so the device itself was like 20 dollars. i got mine at walmart and then you just have little refills i'm not sure i haven't done a refill yet because i just got it recently but the refills it looks like two for seven dollars so oh, not, that's bad. not bad yeah and they they seem to work i mean It says it captures houseflies. I haven't found that to be true. Oh, dang. I haven't had a lot to test it, but it for sure works with like fruit flies and gnats and mosquitoes. Oh, that is mosquitoes. Oh, yes, Yes. of course. (laughs) Well, that's a good trick. What are you giving extra credit to, Heidi? So my extra credit goes to the book, Just Go With It by Madison Wright. I just finished. I loved it. The full title of this book on Amazon is listed as (laughs) Just Go With It, A Second Chance, Marriage of Convenience, Romantic Comedy, (laughs) Nashville is calling book one. (laughs) So that pretty much tells you everything you need to know. (laughs) And this book, Lo reunites with her college crush at a time when she's desperate for health insurance and he needs to rehabilitate his image as a famous TikToker. (laughs) So, of course, the only solution is for them to get fake married. It's a fun read. No open door scenes. I really enjoyed the characters. Really good characters. And I highly recommend if you want some fluffy rom-com escapism. I'll I'll add it to the list. I'm always game. (laughs) That's it for today's episode. Start on those Halloween party plans. And don't forget our teacher-proof tip to use a work packet as a time filler on a party day. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Teacher Approved. I'm Heidi. And I'm Emily. Thank you for listening. Be sure to follow or subscribe in your podcast app so that you never miss an episode. You can connect with us and other teachers in the Teacher Approved Facebook group. We'll see you here next week. Bye for now. Bye.